witness think that they may have some clues that Mr. McCartney is in fact dead, has been for some time, and that his associates, the Beatles, are constantly trying to inform us of that fact. On the other hand, those who claim to be close to the Beatles say there's nothing at all to it, that Paul is very much alive and nobody ever tried to suggest anything. We'll hear from those witnesses, hear what they have to say. There is no judge in this case because you are the judge. And decide whether Paul McCartney is dead, and if he is not dead, whether somebody is trying to persuade us that he is, and if so, for what reason. Tell us your name, please, sir. Russ Gibbs. And where do you live, Mr. Gibbs? Detroit, Michigan. And what is your occupation? I'm a disc jockey on an underground radio station called WKNR-FM. Calling your attention to the 12th day of October of this year, 1969, Mr. Gibbs, in the afternoon, were you on duty and on the air? Yes, sir. And did you receive a phone call from a listener about Paul McCartney, the Beatles singer? Yes, sir, I did. Yeah, hello, Tom. What's going down? I was going to rant with you about uh, McCartney being dead. What is this all about? Well, the uh, youngster said, would you uh, play one cut for me on the air? Forward. And he said, take the uh, album and what we call the White Out album, play a cut called Revolution Number no. 9, and play it forward. And as you do so, the guy comes on and says, Number 9, Number 9, Number 9. He repeats it. And at that point, the kid said, now, play that backwards. And I played it backwards. And man, I freaked. <laughs> I, went, I went crazy because of the fact it says, turn me on, dead man. And I just flipped out. Is that the album? Uh, yes, sir. So I want you to listen now and tell us whether or not this is what you heard when you reversed the recording. Number nine. Turn me on, dead man. What other examples, if any, did you find of curious uh, doings on these albums and recordings? Well, at that point, uh, the switchboard at the station started to light up like crazy, and kids started to call in, but I still had this fellow on the air, and he said, uh, will you play one other thing? And he said, play this one forward. And he said, get the uh, Magical Mystery Tour album. Is this that album? Yes, sir. This is what, one. with reference to that album, did you do? Well, I got out Strawberry Fields, which is a cut on here. And right at the very end, he said, play it. And he said, see if you can hear something in there. And uh, so I play the album forward. And you hear very distinctly at the end, someone saying, I bury Paul. Is that forwards or in reverse? That's forward, sir. All right, will you listen now and tell us if this is what you heard at the end of Strawberry Fields? Have you found any other examples beyond the ones you've described? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, again, in the White Album, uh, you get into a very strange thing. It's, uh, it's in between So Tired and uh, Blackbird. Uh, there's a, a mumble. But then if you play that backwards, it says, Paul is dead man. Miss him. And it's very clear that way. May we hear it now then and see whether or not you recognize it as what you heard when you uncovered it. Yes, sir. Can we have your name, sir? My name is Doc Siegel. And what is your occupation? I'm a recording engineer for Gold Star Studios in Hollywood. Mr. Siegel, have you heard the recordings that we just played through the other witness? Oh, yes. And have you sufficient technical experience to give us any opinion as to the likelihood that these could have been accidentally implanted? It's my considered opinion that they could not have been accidental. Can you tell us a little bit about how these recordings were made and what would be necessary to produce this effect? It was played backwards, so the tape was cut off, turned backwards, put back in. 
that piece definitely had some editing done. Mr. Siegel, based on your experience, do you think it likely or even possible that these could be just sounds which through coincidence seem to reflect a tragic event or a death? But it is possible for perhaps one or two to be accidental. But in the majority, no. I think that they actually were planted. Tape and electronics have brought an enormous new feel to music. It's surprising what you can do once you have a, a sound recorded on tape. There's, there's a whole range of things you can do, which it will be obviously far too complicated to describe to you in detail. But take the sound of an ordinary symbol, for example. Have a listen to this. Now, have you heard it backwards? Hey, we have your name, sir. My name is Fred LeBoer. And where do you live? Ann Arbor, Michigan. What is your occupation, please? I'm a student there at the university. Are you the same Fred LeBoer who published on October 14th, 1969, an article in the Michigan Daily, a newspaper published by the university, which begins as follows. Paul McCartney was killed in an automobile accident in early November 1966 after leaving EMI recording studios tired, sad, and dejected. Well, I was supposed to... They asked me to review Abbey Road, which was uh, the current Beatle album. So, and also there were a lot of rumors going around that Paul was dead, so, you know, I just started putting all those clues together. I hand you a copy mm -hmm. of the album published by the Beatles called Abbey Road and ask you to explain what it was there that made you suspect that Paul was in fact dead. Well, there's John. The four Beatles are crossing a street called Abbey Road and they are leaving what appears to be a cemetery on the left-hand side of the album cover. The first Beatle, John Lennon, is dressed in white and with long hair looks either like uh, a doctor or a minister or even a Christ-like figure, a God-like figure. The next uh, man walking across the street is Ringo, who's dressed as an undertaker. The next man is Paul, who's wearing an outdated suit. Uh, he's barefoot, um, which is, uh, would suggest a corpse, suggest his symbolizing It corpse. is the fact that people are buried in England without their shoes. That's true. Not? That's so I understand, and yes. the fourth figure? And George Harrison has, uh, is wearing denim clothes like he's a grave figure. What significance, if any, do you attach to the parked Volkswagen with a registration plate on the back? Well, the license plate says 28 if, and if Paul McCartney were alive today, he would be in his 28th year of existence. In other words, he would be 27 looking toward his 28th That's birthday. Correct. That's correct. I ask you to reverse the album and tell me whether or not you find anything on the rear of the album that to you is suspicious or appears to be deliberate. Well, there are three dots in the wall up near the top that appear, if, drawn, if a line was drawn between them, it appears to make the number three, so it would read three beetles. Would you connect them up as you suggest? Three beetles. Did you say that that was intended to be a message that there are now alive only three beetles? But it's evidence that you find persuasive. To yeah, it's a, it's a coincidence and a series of hundreds of coincidences in the albums. I send you another album that has been published by the Beatles, I think less than a year ago, called Magical Mystery Tour. Yeah, there are a lot of clues. On the cover, there, the four Beatles are dressed up in animal costumes with masks on. And it's said that the front Beatle is Paul, dressed as a walrus in black in a crucifixion pose. In the uh, inserts inside the album here, in the picture book sort of thing, it says, I am the walrus. No, you're not, said little Nicola. And then when the Beatles album came out, the White Album, a year ago, there's a song in it called Glass Onion, in which John says, and here's another clue for you all, the walrus was Paul. And you think that is John Lennon disclosing the fact that Paul is in fact dead and that's why he's the walrus? Well, it's John Lennon just saying the walrus is Paul. I don't know, you know, exactly what he was trying to do. Is there anything else in specific lyrics that you think forms a part of this entire pattern? Yeah, and Sergeant Pepper, he blew his mind out in a car. He didn't notice that the lights had changed. And the suspicion is that he was in fact killed in an automobile accident, yeah. is that right? Yeah. You're examining now the rear of the album, Sergeant Pepper's. That's right, there are four Beatles on the back and one's back is facing us. The others are facing his face on, one's back is turned, that's Paul. All right. And on the front of the album, do you find anything significant as to the configuration in which Paul McCartney was? Well, the whole album is, is really reeks with death symbols. I mean, there's a grave on the front, which they have acknowledged to be some sort of a grave. Um, 
Down in the lower right hand corner is a group of flowers in the shape of a bass guitar, left handed bass guitar, which if looked at in a certain way, you know, also spell out Paul question mark. Why is left handed significant as to the Paul's bass guitar? left handed. Is he the only left handed beetle? Yeah, that's right. What about this uh, apparent hand that is hanging over his Yeah, head? that's a symbol that seems to recur a lot. It supposedly indicates the presence of evil, singling one person out for the presence of evil. I noticed that uh, in the photographs on the inside of this album, all of the Beatles appear in some sort of costume, but a sleeve patch on the left arm of Paul McCartney, whom you say is left-handed, has the initials OPD on it. Have you found any significance to those initials? Yeah, in England, that's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to mean it's the equivalent of our uh, DOA, dead on arrival, and it means officially pronounced dead. Mm -hmm. You've made reference to other pictures of the Beatles where only Paul McCartney is without shoes, which you interpret to some extent as a right. suggestion of death. Where have you found those? Well, on the cover of Abbey Road, most obviously, but in the pictures that came with the Magical Mystery Tour album, one where they're all standing and they have their hands up, and there's a hand behind Paul's head, of course, next to a white piano, he's barefoot on page 10. And on page 13, he's standing barefoot with his shoes over next to the drums. Is there anything unusual about the shoes that you can see? It appears as though they're red stained. Did you examine this photograph of the four beetles dressed in white, each with a flower, and tell me if there's anything unusual that you found about it? Yeah, Paul is wearing a black rose, and the other beetles are wearing red roses. And what uh, significance do you attach to that? Black rose obviously symbolizes death. What's your name, please? Del. And where do you live? Hollywood, California. Do you know any of the beetles personally? Yes, yeah, saw four of them. And why is that? I worked for their company, Apple, in London for two years. You've heard these uh, recorded Phillips that are found in reversing the track. And do you think they're accidental? No. They were put there deliberately? Yes. Thank you. Sir, what is your name? Peter Asher. And do you know Paul McCartney, Mr. Asher? Yes, I do. I've known him well for about five years. How well do you know him? Is he a close friend? Yes, he's a close friend. Did he at one time live with you, in fact? Yes, he did. He stayed at my house for a while. And so you've known a man who calls himself Paul McCartney both before and after November 1960. Yes, I've known both of them. <laughs> you satisfied that he's alive? Absolutely and completely. Didn't I see. Well, conceding that for a moment, do you think that the Beatles have deliberately put a suggestion of death throughout their songs? No, I do not. Albums? No, I don't. Do you think all of these things that were pointed out... I think the clues are a mixture of coincidence. They're a mixture of things that, that are on the records and that if you listen to in a certain way could be interpreted in this light. But I don't think that any of them are clues planted in order to suggest that Paul is dead. Do you accept the explanation that he gave in Life magazine for all of these coincidences? Um, I see. I mean, I have no reason not to. Uh, I myself, of course, don't know the, the explanation for each of the very many minute clues that these people have concocted. But I do know enough to know that they are certainly not deliberate clues and that the majority of them are in the eye and ear of the beholder rather than in the record. You see, is my vision defective or is Paul McCartney wearing a black rose? He is indeed. Free? He is indeed. There's no question about that. There is no question about that. Do you think that was deliberate or accidental? I have no way of knowing. I wasn't there when they filmed that scene. You do know, don't you, that black roses don't grow that way. They have to be specially prepared. Yes, I, I've been told that. So Paul McCartney told Life magazine that they just happened to run out of red roses, so he put on a black one. Do you believe that? Uh, yes, I believe that, yes. You think there was a black one lying around by accident? Yes. I doubt if they're real roses, but since it's costume, I'm sure they had a black one as well as some red ones. These are the fact uh, that some claim they weren't wearing any flowers at all. Those were painted on afterwards. Well, I suppose that's possible as well. They could have done the scene and then decided they'd look better with flowers in their lapels. If they were painted minutes. on afterwards, the use of a black one was certainly deliberate, was it not? That would be easy to tell, of course, by looking at the film itself, which is available. Turn your attention, if you will, to the album called Abbey Road. Mr. Asher, knowing as you do something in the English styles of today, isn't it yes. the fact that that's an out-of-date gray suit? It is indeed an out-of-date gray suit. And isn't it a fact that people in England, when they are deceased, are buried without their shoes? That we find him elsewhere without shoes, and the shoes are nearby with what appears to be some blood on them. Did you notice that? It is in the Magical Mystery album, I believe. You yes, can examine that and tell me whether or not the only people not wearing shoes, once again, is Paul. Uh, yes, it is. That's right. It is not that shoes on. And the only pair of shoes without somebody standing in them is <laughs> next to Paul. That's true. What about the reddish stain on the shoes? 
how it has to be anything. It could be like a printing. Like the catch of a red pen. Yeah. It could, it could be. I don't, I don't think it looks like it's on the photograph to me, not the shoes. So but either way, my point is that I know, you know, that, that I know he's alive. I know the Beatles wouldn't do a thing like this. You think that the so-called clues, remarks, and other things that are found in these recordings as they're taken apart are all coincidence? It's a combination of things that aren't there, and in some case, maybe someone was saying, oh, uh, my microphone's dead or something, and, and, and now you hear, oh, you just, just, just to be hear the word. Yes. Do you think they could be that sloppy so as to put that accidentally under a stereo tape? Uh, not accidentally in the sense that they know it's there. If you, if you do a take and someone says something during the take and it's the best take, you leave it in. After the walrus picture was out and on mm -hmm. the street, yes. Paul <clears throat> was described in a song called The Glass Onion as the walrus That's by true. John Lennon who said, and now I have another That's clue you. for you all, the walrus is Paul. Now, That's is that, that an accident? The whole song was, um, uh, it is a reference to the fact that people do frequently attempt to find clues in their albums. Oh, I see. And that's the only reason you put that in there? Yes. Well, now, Mr. Asher, you claim, of course, that Paul was alive. That may well be so. I know. You also claim that the Beatles did not deliberately try to create this myth in order to uh, that is what increase I their publicity. That is what I know to be true, yes. But it has increased the publicity, hasn't it? Well, only because all you people have taken it seriously enough to do all this incredible nonsense for an hour yeah. uh, about something that really is just, you know, not true and, and in Paul's own words, is bloody stupid. Life magazine, too, is guilty of incredible nonsense, is it yes, not? Yes, they are indeed. And Time magazine is guilty of incredible nonsense. Well, you can't blame them any more than one can blame you because it's news. It's only news because people are stupid enough to want to believe it. I see. Do you think that it does any good at all for the Beatles to be thus publicized about a very fascinating possibility? I really don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you're probably right. Their record sales have probably increased because of this. Mr. But that's Asher. certainly something that doesn't concern them. They don't, they're not about to embark on some ridiculous publicity thing to try and sell more records. They've Are sold you? all the records they ever need to yes, sell. Yes, I understand. Are you a radio technician? No. An audio technician? Uh, I'm familiar with the, the uh, techniques of uh, recording. Yes, you heard the testimony producer. of an expert that those things on those records had to be deliberately planted and could not be the result of accident. Now, do you still say they were an accident? I've, I've, you've asked me this question three times as to whether I think they're an accident, and I've explained. Some of them are accidental, some of them are not there, some of them are there, but are not necessarily what they are heard to what be. What about I Buried Paul? Is it there? Uh, it sounds like it is to me, yes. It sounds like John is saying I buried Paul. What about Turn Me On, Dead Man? Turn Me On, Dead Man. I couldn't hear that myself. So you say it is not there? I couldn't hear it. What about the word miss him, miss him, miss him? What does that Is it miss him, miss him? You are, as you have put it, a very close friend yes. of Paul McCartney. I am. Well, isn't it a fact that even if you thought he was guilty of a little hoax here, that you wouldn't say so? Uh... That's probably true, yes. If I really thought he was hoaxing, I'd probably back him up. So you say that you're not defending him because you don't have to, but if he were guilty of something, you probably would defend him anyway, and that is I the basis on know. which we must... No, 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 that's, that's a very unfair end. Thank you, sir. What is your name, sir? Uh, Sal Iannucci. Where do you live? Uh, Los Angeles. By whom you employed? Capitol Records. Is that the same Capitol Record company that publishes the Beatles albums? That's right. And in what capacity are you employed? I'm president of Capitol Records. What do you know about Paul McCartney being dead? I've heard a lot of talk and I've read about it, but I don't believe it. Do you approve the artwork in these covers that come out? Usually. You find the existence of a black rose on one, but not all of the Beatles to be of no significance, I take it? Not in my mind. Uh, what has happened to the sale of Beatle records since this wave hit the country, so to speak? Well, the Abbey record has been selling well. Uh, if the Abbey record is new, the others have been on the market for a while. You say that you've had no increase in sales, felt no effect from all of this publicity? Well, on the two records which have been discussed, the, the Magical Mystery and uh, the other record, uh, Sergeant Pepper, uh, we've noticed some increase recently in the in the number of a sharp increase It would be substantial over what would be expected, but I'm sure that it's uh, caused in part by The discussion and the conjecture as to whether McCartney would you as president of Capitol Records participate in a hoax of this sort in order to increase sales No, no I don't think we'd engage right, And do you say that none has been perpetrated to your knowledge? Uh, not by uh, no not to my knowledge If Sergeant Pepper were the funeral then the white album would be the coffin. And the lyrics sheet 
the hymna. The accompanying poster is a collage of photos. One photo in particular, according to the rumor, grabs the attention. It's supposed to be the imposter before the makeover. There's the white car again. Your name, sir? Alan Klein. And where do you live? Uh, New York City. What is your occupation? I'm the president of Abco Industries. It's a business management company. Do you represent these Beatles we've been talking about? Yes, yes we do. And for how long have you represented them? Uh, nine months. Is one of the Beatles that you represent Paul McCartney? Yes, he is. Do you agree with Mr. Asher that these are all totally haphazard and there is no purpose and message behind any of the artwork? I don't think there's a message behind the artwork at all. The Sgt. Pepper album was a concept album which dealt with, in effect, what the Beatles felt they might be like uh, when they were 64 years old. Now, so consequently, you know, you would have the question of age and maybe death. But don't you agree that Paul McCartney is constantly being singled out? Something is different about him than the rest of the Beatles. Well, he's different than the rest of them. But I think they're all different. Have you had any discussion with the Beatles since these stories got loose? Yeah, I was in England last week. The only thing I did question uh, John on was the statement, which you can hear playing uh, when you play the uh, uh, the record forward, where I buried Paul. And it was a very simple explanation. When you make a recording, you will have uh, sounds or maybe imperfections. And, That's uh, quite an imperfection. You say it was an accident. I buried Paul. What he was referring to was uh, was the fact that on that particular take, his guitar buried Paul's sound. And that's what he was saying. And that's his explanation? Yeah, pure and simple. But Paul didn't give that to Life Magazine when they interviewed him. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I wasn't with uh, Paul when he gave it to Life Magazine. But you've seen the published interview. Well, I don't know that what they did is quoted him word for word. Do you accept Paul's explanation that he wound up with a black rose when the others had red ones just because they happened to run out of red roses? Sure. Do you know how black rose is created? I don't know that that was an actual rose, and I don't think you do either. Well, whether it's a rose, a carnation, or any other form. It could form. have been a prop. In other words, a, 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 uh, an artificial. So it's declining. His statement was. So I had a black carnation because they'd run out of red ones. And I said, all right, I'll have a black one out of whatever you've got. This is all accidental. Yeah. Not intended by the Beatles to give a suggestion of death that might give rise to these stories? Absolutely. You think the Beatles are in any way profiting, according to your knowledge of their finances, from the intense public interest in these albums? They don't have to stoop to this type of publicity in order to say, uh, financially reward themselves. Well, Mr. Klein, absent any commercial interest in the product of all this publicity, do you think they might be up to just some crankery? I think they were annoyed. In the beginning, I don't think they really cared, but I think Paul got very annoyed with it. He went, well, I don't try to talk about it. Two weeks ago, he was annoyed. Do you think he's anxious to have these stories set to rest? Well, I think he certainly took a giant step. He allowed life to come up there, and he allowed pictures. Despite all rumors and reports to the contrary, Paul McCartney of the Beatles is alive and walking around, if a little irritated that people keep saying he is dead. Here's a picture of him made Wednesday night in Glasgow, and he is on his feet, alive. There were two real basic questions. A, is Paul McCartney dead, and B, is there someone taking his place? I would tell you, if uh, we could come up with someone, who write as well as the second Paul McCartney, I think we've made a, a very good substitution. But I don't think you can... Mr. Klein, conceding the, uh, the talent of whoever is now wearing the Paul McCartney suit, so to speak, it would indeed be quite a story if he were replaceable in the manner suggested, would it not? Well, I think it would be almost as impossible as it would be to, say, substitute fingerprints. And speaking of fingerprints, what steps has Mr. McCartney taken to compare the prints that he's now wearing on his fingers were the ones which were officially recorded back in the early 60s when he left the country. Absolutely not. I don't think he has to. Well, the question then arises as to whether or not the Beatles really want to shut down this publicity and set the stories to rest, or whether or not the sale of albums may be going so well that it would be a bad idea. Why is Paul McCartney not said, okay, look, here's Scotland Yard, they have my prints, here's my fingers, they say I'm the same guy, let's stop the nonsense. He hasn't done that. If you would guarantee me that every single person would categorically stop and cease and desist, he'd do it. Do you recognize a three in front of the name Beatles in the back of the album made out by those dots? Yeah, I think Peter Asher, or someone drew it. But the dots were there before he picked up the pen. Can I look at it? Sure. I 
I wonder if you would do yourself a favor and get the album which was printed in England. That's a terrible short pack, Al. I'd like to help you. Is that a bad album? Is that a bad album? Cover. Defect on the cover. Oh, the defect on the cover. The three. <clears throat> Find those, uh, I, I really can't the judge. I, okay. I would like to see the, uh, the original. This then is pretty much the case on the death of Paul McCartney. It is perfectly evident that if the Beatles wanted to, they could have by this time have completely foreclosed this rumor. And such evidence has not been forthcoming from their end.